Are you a beginner player in MechWarrior Online? Did you just start playing MWO? Or are you just looking to maybe branch out a little bit into different mech weight classes and you wonder what might be a good starting mech to do that? If the answer is yes, then this is the video for you. Greetings mech warriors. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is TTB, good to see you. This is the Assault Mech Guide for beginners, long time in the making. I'm sorry guys, but as today is basically Christmas, well, Merry Christmas! Here we go! Once again, let's revisit our beginner mech criteria. We want to have good armor, we want to have, if available, a one-button weapon system, a good peaking profile around corners and above terrain. It doesn't have to be too fast, but it also doesn't need to have toggle mask. ECM if possible, good range, and good heat management. The seven points that are very, very important to us. So. There are a lot of assault mechs available, ranging from the iconic Atlas down to the not less iconic Zeus. But I actually chose, as a good beginner mech, the Bloodasp Bravo. Because it ticks most of the points that we just discussed. But let's just go ahead and have a quick look at what I built here. So this is our Bloodasp Bravo. As you can see, it is a big assault mech, yes, but... Look at the peaking profile, guys. Do you see any weapons below the neckline? Nope. All the weapons are at cockpit level or above, which makes this thing insanely good at peaking above terrain and uh, not having to expose much of itself to shoot the targets. And on top of that, it also carries ECM. Now, it is a clan assault mech. That means it's not going to be the beefiest assault mech out there, but the ECM will keep it very healthy and combined with that great peaking profile, you can do a lot of damage to the enemy. The build is on screen right now. And of course, as always, all the builds are available down below in the paste bin link. We've got three clan ultra AC5s in the right torso. This is taken from the Blood Asp Delta. And we have in the left torso from the Blood Asp Prime, one clan ultra AC10. You could also have used the Blood Asp Delta left torso for this, by the way, as well. In terms of ammo, we have got four tons of ultra AC5 ammo in the left torso, one ton each in each leg, and then three tons of ultra AC10 ammo in total, one in the leg each and one in the center torso. We don't have to lower too much armor here. The only thing that we're lowering a little bit is the right and left leg by an amount of seven armor total per leg so that we can fit all of this into the mech and that is basically it. For the skill tree, I chose the following. I chose to go heavily into firepower. Most important to us are of course magazine capacity one and magazine capacity two. But we're also taking enhanced Ultra Auto Cannon slash Ultra Ray Auto Cannon 1 and 2. That reduces our jam duration. And then we take all the heat gen nodes, which will allow our weapons to produce less heat when they're firing, and a lot of the cooldown nodes as well, so that our weapons can recycle faster. Then we go to the survival tree. We take the left hand side of the survival tree. This is, gives you the best amount of extra armor for the least amount of skill points invested. And we also take one point here in skeletal density. Then we jump over to the operations tree and we take it down to cool run one and two. This also gives us three points of heat containment, one, two, and three right here. So that will increase our maximum heat value by 9% and it will increase the efficiency of our heat sinks by a total of 4%. And then we go into the sensors tree and here is what we need to get first. So if you're building this mech, this is the tree you want to invest in first. We go down and get enhanced ECM systems one over here and enhanced ECM systems two over here. Unless you get these two points, this whole build is completely useless because your ECM will not cover you from being spotted on the radar. You will be covered for like a thousand meters or whatnot, but as soon as you get a little bit closer, like 500 meters or so, the enemy team will spot you. So always, always, if you play any ECM mech, get enhanced ECM systems 1 and 2. That is the most important thing in all of that mech. And then, of course, since we are already that deep into the sensors tree, we take radio deprivation 1, 2, and 4 over here, as well as radio deprivation 3 over on the right-hand side, and seismic sensor 1 and 2 that will allow you to see targets approaching you at a range of 200 meters, regardless of whether they have ECM or stealth or anything, but be aware, guys, it only works when you're standing still. And then last but not least, in the auxiliary tree, we get double cool shot with cool shot cooldown and an extra consumable slot that you can use for an artillery strike, for example, or a UAV if you choose to. Okay, so let's take this thing quickly onto our testing grounds and uh, I'll show you a couple of features of this build. 
Alrighty guys, here we are on our familiar Caustic Valley Here's test guy. bench. Online. As you can see, I'm looking at the awesome right now, and I wanted to show you a couple of features of this mech. Number one, this is how the one tap looks like. A lot of bullets flying at your enemy. If you aim that at the cockpit, they will get uh, shaken around quite a bit and of course blinded by all the flashes. And this, since these are ultra auto cannons, you can easily double tap them, but of course there's a chance that one or many of those weapons will jam. But you know what, it doesn't really matter. You just keep spamming the mouse button and it will give you a lot of ducker storm towards the enemy. This is what you see normally when you're getting duckered in the face by somebody. It's just a constant storm of bullets. Now, for this awesome over there, he is currently at almost 500 meters range, which is perfect for us, not a problem, because our weapons have an ideal range of 600 meters altogether, and that is the Ultra AC-10. If you count the Ultra AC-5s, they have an ideal range of 700 meters, so even further than that. So I would say you can reliably engage targets at 900 meters and getting closer to you. Which is really nice. Of course, you won't do much, uh, much damage at that range, but you can damage targets in a way that it hurts. Now, for the awesome, as you can see, we could easily shoot him from here. You can even hit his cockpit. Oh, I need to be careful you let the cockpit kill him. <laughs> that wasn't intended. But let's, let's, I mean, this is what I can see, right? Let's see what the awesome sees. We'll just jump out of our cockpit. We'll go over to the awesome. And we will pretend to sit in his cockpit. <laughs> Look at these impacts. Holy hell, that was accurate. Um, and we will pretend to be in his cockpit. And this is what he sees. And you probably don't see anything right now. Because... It blends well with the environment, and the only thing you see basically are the two hunchback bunny ears of your blood ass. We're gonna go a little bit closer so you guys understand what, what we're seeing here. There we go. Ah, you might start to see it now. It might become clearer now. Even better, even better. Now you can see the mech clearly. And this is the mech. See how much of that mech is actually covered by this little boulder right in front of us? It covers so much that you only have to expose about 25% of your whole mech area to be able to shoot your targets. And the good thing is, all the um, triple auto cannons are on the right side torso, so with the current rotator meta, it's better to have right-mounted weapons, so even your most firepower is at the correct side. And on top of that, you have ECM, so they won't be able to target you at this range at all, unless they have a tag. Beautiful! So. This is how you can play this mech. You just go up to a target, you uh, find him, he's in, maybe fighting your teammates, maybe he's just walking around, he doesn't even notice you. Give him a quick double tap, and you just go back to cover. And that's it. And then you rinse repeat. Just don't do it too often, guys, because um, after the third or fourth peak, somebody will start shooting back at you, I can guarantee that. Yep. Back and forth, and back and forth. I mean, at this range, you might even consider getting advanced and zoom, but you don't really need it. There we go, there New is our kill. Acquired. And, of course, Look at the speed, guys. We have 64.8 kph. That is enough speed to be able to move around with the team without any problems. But here's the caveat, guys. When you're playing Assault Max, this is very important for any Assault Max that you play. You need to be mobile on the battlefield. You need to know the maps well to know where you can go and where you can't go and where there is too much open terrain that you have to cross. Because remember, guys, you are in a slow mech. This one, not so much, but Assault Max can go down to 45 kph or whatnot. It's really hard sometimes to keep pace with the team unless you're used to pushing like a crazy madman. So keep that in mind. Movement is life. Also, this guy should be dead here in a couple of taps. New target That's one. Acquired. Destroyed. Bye bye. So yeah, a little bit of Dakar. Really nice mech to play. Highly recommended on my part. Next up, we have one of the best assault mechs in the game. This is the Cyclops Sleipnir. Beautiful, beautiful inner sphere assault mech, and very much highly regarded amongst the more experienced players I would say but also not bad for a novice player if you know how to build it and if you know how to play it so let's have a look at the loadout real quick this one is a quad LB10 loadout we have a standard engine 270 for 48.6 kph remember what I said about assault mix being slow generally we have two tons of ammo in each leg two tons of ammo in the center torso and one ton of ammo in the cockpit uh, we have to lower the cockpit armor a little bit, we have to lower the legs quite a bit, and the arms quite a bit to be able to fit all of this. But uh, this mech is just fairly straightforward, a one-button mech basically. Optimal range will be around 600 meters for our quad LB10s, and those just shred through open components and are also really good at removing armor, but of course not as precise as the ultra-auto cannons I showed you before. 
For the skill tree, we're going into the firepower tree, we're getting some of the heat gen nodes, we're getting magazine capacity 1 and 2, we're getting uh, LBX spread 1 and 2 to make those uh, spread of the shotguns a little bit tighter. Then we go into the survival tree, we take a lot of the tanky stuff in here, so left hand side for maximum armor, plus the right hand side to get the missing two points of armor, plus some more skeletal density for extra tankiness on the components. Then we go into the sensors tree, we take seismic sensor 1 and 2, radar deprivation 1 through 5, so that as soon as we are not on the enemy scopes anymore, we vanish from the radar and can't get learned as easily. And then in the auxiliary tree, I chose to go double cool shot with cool shot cooldown, just in case somebody comes around with a flamer, or I run hot because I'm firing too much. Now, for the way how to play this mech, there are a few peculiarities that we need to talk about, so let's jump into our test bench. So what does make the Slagnir so unique? Well, it is an assault mech, but it has pretty good torso agility. So if you try to twist away with your torso, and this is best done with your arms unlocked because you don't have any arm-mounted weapons, so the only target crosshair that counts right now is the big crosshair, not the round one, you can twist away fairly quickly. As you can see, it has a pretty good torso twist speed. Let's see how long we take to do a full 180 torso twist. One, two, two and a half to three seconds for a full 180 torso twist, which is quick, very quick for an assault mech. So that agility is really nice. The speed that you get, like how long it takes you to get to max speed, it instantly almost goes up to max speed, one to 1.5 seconds. And then of course there are the LB10s. Target now the way you shouldn't play this thing is to just stare at your enemy and then shoot him with the LB10s. I mean, you can do that and the closer the enemy is, the more it's gonna hurt them. But what you generally want to do, especially if you're trading damage, is you wanna shoot somebody and then you twist away. And then you twist back in and you shoot again and you twist the other side. And that way you can just spread the damage over your mech. Let me go ahead and demonstrate this really quickly. Although this one shot actually on an open CT of this mech spawner pilot might actually kill him. Target destroyed. Yep. That's the power of the LB10 crits. Those auto cannons will do more damage if your target is open in any components. So, let's say for example you're fighting against this uh, gentleman acquired. up here in his awesome. Uh, let's get a, bit, a little bit closer, but as you can see the range right down low below is uh, 600 meters. And that awesome would be firing back. Well, the first thing you would see, by the way, this awesome has PPCs, remember 90 meters dead zone, so you would try to get closer and basically just uh, laugh at him because he can't shoot you anymore. But let's say you can't do that, so uh, you see the guy, you shoot him, you twist away. Your weapons have recycled, you twist back again, you shoot, you twist away, you cycle back again, you shoot, you twist away, and so on. And you just repeat that until you kill the guy. Um, of course, it's going to take a little bit of time to learn that, and um, you got to be very careful not to mess up the crosshair, so you shoot the wrong crosshair. Destroyed. But once you get this down, um, it's going to be very important and very helpful for you guys, for any mech, to just learn the whole twist and shoot and twist and shoot. Um, even something just like, like going in for a shot and then just doing a little wiggle like this can help a lot. But do remember guys, you need to get the timing right. So the LB10 shot timing is the, in the way that you shoot, twist, shoot, twist. So it needs to be a little bit faster, that way you can max out the damage you can pump out. But don't sacrifice um, accuracy for shooting more, because it's important to get these shots in target. Remember, you only have about 180 shells, which sounds like a lot, but you're chewing through them quite quickly. And as you can see, the heat development going full speed is not that crazy. I mean, we're jumping up about, what is that, in between shots, maybe 8% or so. So you can shoot for quite a bit and do quite a lot of damage. And remember, guys, always look for those open components with your LBX-10 autocannons. These rip through them. Okay. The next mech I want to show you guys is the Madcat 2 Bravo. Most of you already know that. This has basically become the replacement for the good old Kodiak 3 Daka build. And it's a very nimble, very agile Ultra Auto Cannon 10 slash Ultra Auto Cannon 5 Daka mech. Has high hard points, has arm mounted weapons, so has very good mobility with those Ultra Auto Cannons as well. And it's just a really, really good mech in general. Plus, it's not a hero mech, so you can buy it for C builds. The build is on screen right now. You use a Clan XL Engine 340 for the speed, which gives you about 61 kph of speed. You have two Ultra Auto Cannon 10s, you have two Ultra Auto Cannon 5s, and then you just stuff a lot of ammo in there. This build uses currently 5 6 tons of Clan Ultra AC 10 ammo and 6 tons of Clan Ultra AC 5 ammo, plus 5 double heat sinks added in total. 3 in the engine and 1 in each side torso. For the skill tree, 
We're using the firepower tree to get to magazine capacity one and two as always, enhanced UAC slash rack one and two as always, and some of the heat gen nodes that we can grab. Plus I also chose to get one velocity node here. Then we go into the survival tree. We take this full survival tree, except AMS overload one and two and reinforced casing. This gives us nice, nice tankiness on this build. And you definitely need that because it's a little bit more flimsy than your Kodiak. Then we go into operations, full operations tree for maximum cool run and maximum heat if containment. And then in the auxiliary tree, we're using double cool shot with cool shot cooldown because this thing can get a little bit hot, plus an extra consumable slot for maybe a double artillery strike. Now, if you want to, you can just skip the operations tree and just put all of that in sensors for radar deprivation plus seismic sensor. I'll leave that up to you. You guys can decide for your own how to do that. The mech basically plays exactly like you would expect it to, um, very similar to what we were doing with the Blood Asp, only that you have to unlock your arms and then use the little target reticule to shoot at your targets. So guys, here is a quick demonstration of the Madcat 2 Bravo. As I said, make sure your arms are unlocked. And as you can see, you can have really good mobility with those arms. You can shoot targets very high up top or very low down below. It's really up to you. Uh, of course, as I say this, everything jams. That is just rotten luck. But um, yeah, as you can see, you can, you can aim up high. You can aim down at your feet, not a problem. And of course, you can just aim Target at uh, enemy targets that you see. And then you just duck them down with your firepower. That was one salvo. Let's do another double tap. Mm -hmm, that should open up the CT. And one more double tap and that thing should be dead. Very simple. Especially if the target stands still, of course. But yeah, that's the gist of playing this Madcap Bravo. And as I said, nice high hard points to actually help you with not exposing too much of your mech. But you will have to expose a little bit more than with the Blood Asp. Now I want to show you guys a few more slightly more advanced builds that also have a nice niche that they fit in and that are also fun to play and still relatively safe to play. And the first thing I want to show you here is the good old Death Blimp, the Stalker 3F Bravo. And that thing comes equipped with ECM, so that's really nice for us. And it has the ability to do huge alpha strikes that will introduce you for the first time to those really nice assault level alphas. We're using a light engine 300 for 57.2 kph speed. We have Garden ECM in the center torso. And then we use for our weapons a total of six medium lasers, two MRM-30 launchers, and we have six tons of MRM-30 ammo, plus two double heat sinks in the engine and five double heat sinks in the rest of the mech. Alpha Strike Firepower here, close range, 90 damage. This thing does a lot of damage and also has really good range. The MM30 is reaching up to 600 meters and then the medium lasers, optimal range being about 300 and max range almost 600 meters as well. So the medium lasers are best reserved for, let's say 400 meters and below. Now let's show you guys how to actually shoot this bad boy. So guys, the Stalker is a very elongated shape. Uh, it's like it's like a torpedo and the problem with that is if you twist too much you're showing the enemy your whole side and especially you're showing them your vulnerable arms where your, your valuable MRM-30 launchers are in. So if you're fighting a target, let's say for example target our acquired. gentleman Asam up front here, then what you don't want to do is over twist. You don't want to twist like this all the way over because at this point, let me show you what this guy sees. This guy over here, he now sees exactly your arm and if he shoots you where he normally would shoot which is kind of central he's gonna hit that arm and that is basically an MRM 30 launcher and two medium lasers in there so that's 40 damage from your alpha strike that gets destroyed if that gets hit and those arms are rather flimsy so make sure you don't over twist maybe twist just a little bit here and a little bit there and try to get the damage onto your side torsos more than on your arms because it can take a lot more Artillery now what's important online. for this stalker very important and that is something that can throw a lot of people off. It has weapon bay doors. There is a button, for me it's right next to my shift button right below return. Uh, it is called toggle weapon bay doors. Make sure you have bound that and make sure to use it. See? Weapon bay doors closed. Weapon bay doors open. Weapon bay doors closed. If you have them closed and you press your fire button for your MRMs, this is what happens. I'm pressing. See? There's about a second delay between pressing it and shooting, and these will close automatically again. So, while it's not a problem if you're firing continuously with the MRMs afterwards, uh, the first shot will be a problem. So, I would recommend at the beginning of the match, if you have a weapon bay door mech, just open those weapon bay doors. You're going to take a little bit more damage if something hits this, but it's not a huge deal, so you can just forget about it. Plus, those doors open downwards, so you don't increase the size of your mech hitbox anyways. And then when you fire... 
it comes up instantly. Okay, so let's just quickly demonstrate the firepower of this mech with this one. I would actually recommend to have uh, arm lock on because that way you just have one cross that you have to worry about. You can't even twist your arms to the side, they just go up and down as you can see. And um, I mean basically you just find your target, you line it up as best as you can and then you just unleash the alpha strike. And as you can see, just took away 11% from this awesome with one shot, and with another shot. He's almost dead. If I'm a little bit closer, he is going to be dead because there will be more shots on the center. And as you could see, as, as far as heat containment goes, or as far as the heat development goes, it's not that bad. You can alpha strike this bad boy three, four, maybe even five times before you have to go ahead the and actually go down. So, um, that being said, it's a really, really nice thing to have. We can actually test this. I mean, Caustic Buddy is a nice testing bench for mech hotness. So, let's go ahead and start Target murdering stuff acquired. and see how many shots we can get out before we actually overheat ourselves to death. It's two. Destroyed. Yeah, okay, so you have to be a little bit careful on the hot map like this, but you could still shoot the MRM furnace at this point at least twice without a problem, or if you stagger it out a little bit, you can just shoot them with the lasers. As you can see, with the 30s alone, it's almost cooling enough so that you don't even have to worry about stopping to shoot at any point. And if you wanted to shoot the medium lasers, then you just use a cool shot and then just bring them on later. So, really nice mech, Target good range, destroyed. does have two weapon systems, one direct fire, the other one um, has to um, aim a little bit more carefully and has to, of course, lead the target if you're shooting long range. But other than that, and if you keep in mind to open your bay doors and wiggle your nose instead of over-twisting to Zimbabwe, then you will have a really good time with this mech. Just keep the heat in check. So I can already hear you guys saying, so TTB. Assault mechs are supposed to be very, very tanky. So far you've shown us assault mechs that are tanky, but not insanely tanky. So show us a really, really tanky build that could be played by a somewhat of a novice player, but with the caveat, it's gonna have multiple weapon systems because at this weight class, you have to learn how to use multiple weapon systems simultaneously. And I would say, well, there's two mechs that fit the build and both can run the same build. I'm going to show you the build on a hero mech here. This is going to be the Atlas Kraken. Uh, this thing comes with a crown of thorns and a shovel, shoulders, and a giant axe, apparently, and angel wings because I felt funny. As you can tell from the image of this mech. So yeah, um, you can do the same build on the Atlas 7 Delta, but uh, I just did it on the Kraken because it just was, just, just, just for shits and giggles and because it looks great. Now, for the loadout, we have a standard engine 310 to give us a speed of 50 kph and our alpha strike firepower will be 85 which is still very considerable. We have a heavy gauss rifle in the right torso, we have two MRM 30s in the left torso, we've got four tons of heavy gauss ammo and four and a half tons of MRM ammo plus an extra double heatsink in the right arm. Um, Endosteel structure of course, double heatsinks, I already told you about that. And that's the build guys. So what is special about this mech? Look at the armor values. 165 armor center torso plus 78 structure you have to do over 200 and what do we have here 230 over 240 damage to actually kill this thing straight through ct from the front that's a lot the side torsos have 123 armor that is more armor than most mechs have on their ct even most assault mechs have on their ct the arms 85 armor, insane shields, really good at shielding damage, and they are pretty big, so you can actually tank quite a bit of damage if you know how to torso twist. So, what's the catch? Catch number one, you are the loot pinata on the battlefield. Atlas still gets focused like crazy. Problem number two, you have to deal with a heavy gauss rifle and two MRM 30s, so it's a little bit more difficult to shoot, but I'm going to show you how to do that right now. For our Atlas Kraken skill tree, we'll go to the firepower tree, we take high explosive 1 and 2, we take missile spread 1, we take missile rack 2 over here on the left hand side, on the right hand side we take magazine capacity 1 and 2, and for the first time gauss charge 1 and 2, and the way this works is that it extends out the time that our gauss rifles can be charged before we have to release the shot, before it actually drops the charge, so that allows us to have more time to aim before we have to shoot. Then in the survival tree, we take the full survival tree, except AMS overload 1 and 2, because we don't have an AMS system installed. That gives us maximum armor and maximum structure, plus less crit chance received, on top of what the Atlas already gets, which is which is like over 20% less crits received. Yeah, the Atlas is a very, very tanky mech, the tankiest mech in the game. On the operations tree side, we take cool run 1 and 2, and heat containment 1, 2, and 3. 
On the sensor side, we take seismic 1 and 2, 5 points of radar deprivation, and in the auxiliary tree, an additional considerable slot, so I would recommend to run this with a cool shot and an artillery strike or airstrike. So, that has been the Atlas Kraken in the uh, blueprint phase. Let's take this thing quickly into our testing bench and let's see what we can do. So with this particular mech guys, first and foremost, we unlock our arms because that way we can twist a little bit e more easily and uh, we don't need the arms anyways, we just have the big cross that we have to worry about. We have two weapon systems, I would recommend you guys you put, you put the MRMs on mouse button 1 and the Gauss rifle on mouse button 2. That also is a nice representation of where they are on your mech, Target the MRMs acquired. are on the left side and the heavy Gauss rifle, bada beam, bada boom, it is on the right side of your mech. Now you need to be aware of one fact guys. The heavy gauss rifle, when you shoot it, look at the crosshair. Target yep, destroyed. it's gonna make it throw around and it will throw off your aim if you shoot everything at the same time. So the way that you do this target is you find your target, you, uh, you charge up your heavy gauss rifle, at the same moment you unleash your MRMs and then once the MRMs are going, then you online. shoot the heavy gauss. It looks a little bit like this. Charge, shoot and release. Bada beam, bada boom. Once more, charge, MRM and release. Very simple, guys. And if you get too hot at any point, you just shoot the heavy gauss rifle. But yeah, this is very straightforward, very simple. And I'm gonna show you what happens if you try to shoot it at the same time. It looks a little bit funny, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it can just really throw off your aim. So I would recommend to learn the sequence. Charge, shoot the other weapon, and release. That's the only thing you need to remember. And if you can literally say it in your head. Charge, shoot, release. And if you shoot them at the same time, this is how it looks. Hang on a second, I have to do this conscientiously because otherwise I, I will mess it up. So charge and then... No, it kind of worked, it kind of worked. But if you shoot the Gauss rifle just a little bit earlier, it might mess up your aim, let's see. No, we were lucky. It's more prominent with lasers, I feel, than with the MRMs. But it's a good practice, guys, to go ahead and learn the sequence. Also, what's helping us out here is that we have the um, boss skills from the skill tree, that way we can charge a boss rifle and it stays charged for a little bit before we have to release it. Okay, so much for the Atlas. And of course, once you've shot, as, as always, especially if this Atlas, you have insane armor on the arms, so what you want to make sure of is that you shoot and you twist. And then what you can do, for example, is you charge now, shoot and twist to the other side. And then as you're twisting in, you start charging every boss rifle and twist again. This is how you play this Atlas. Very straightforward, very powerful mech, and it will command fear and respect on the battlefield, but you will also be the focus target, so be aware of that. All right, TTB, so you've shown us mechs that can kill a lot of stuff, and you've shown us mechs that can take a lot of damage. What about mechs that are more suitable for playing as a team role, like defending your teammates, maybe keeping them safe from LRMs? Well, I'm glad you asked because I have got the best anti-LRM mech in the whole game here. And this is the Corsair 7A, or as I like to call it, Operation Iron Dome. This thing comes equipped with four AMSs and it has Rakadaka plus lasers to actually deal with the enemy. Plus, it looks like a gorgeous Franken mech, actually like a I don't know, mutated version of a sun spider that went to the gym and beefed up even more. So, for the loadout, we are going to use a standard engine 300. So this is a very safe thing. It also will not overheat if you lose a side torso. We're using triple rotary AC2s with a total of six tons of ammo. And we're using four ER medium lasers for precision range defense once our rotary AC2s are on cooldown. And then we have four AMSs and a lot of AMS ammo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half tons of AMS ammo. This is enough AMS ammo to shut down an entire enemy team of Lurmers over time, of course, because uh, LRMs is a game of volume. So if you have three Lurm boats learning something, yeah, it will go through the AMS, but it will not do as much damage as it would otherwise do. So this thing is really great to protect your team, for example, on maps like Polar Highlands. And it has great range with the rotary AC2s, about 650 meters with this build, which is really nice. So you can unleash at very safe ranges. And since you have a nice peaking profile, you only have to expose about 30% of your mech to actually be able to bring all those weapons to bear. Now for the skill tree, this is a little bit different. 
we are going into the firepower tree and we're going to get enhanced rack UAC 1 and 2, magazine capacity 1 and 2, laser duration nodes for your medium lasers and some of the heat gen nodes to keep this mech as cool as possible. Then we're taking the survival tree and in the survival tree we take the left hand side for maximum armor and the right hand side to uh, get those two elusive armor nodes as well, plus more skeletal density and AMS overload 1 and 2. Really important, especially on really important on any AMS mech, but especially important here because you just increase the effectiveness of your quadruple AMS even further. So definitely take these two skill nodes very quickly if you're playing the Corsair 7A. I would actually argue these should be the first two skill nodes that you get on this mech because it's going to improve your main defensive capabilities for your team. And then you go into the sensors tree, we take seismic sensor 1 and 2, we take 4 points of radar deprivation, and in the auxiliary tree we're taking double cool shot with cool shot cooldown and an extra consumable slot, for example, for an artillery strike. Okay, let's jump into a game real quick and then show you how to shoot this thing. Alright guys, here we are with the Corsair 7A on our Caustic Valley test bench. If you want to see this thing in action, I just recommend you use the search function on my YouTube channel. You will find the correct builds and guides Target for this mech specifically, and you will see it in action against enemy Lermers, and they will just start crying. But for shooting it, basically what you do, um, let's say you want to be at optimal range for all your weapons, so you go to about 430 meters, and then you would just go ahead, you would uh, of course zoom in, uh, you would keep your arms locked, and then you would shoot at this awesome right here in the torso. You start the Rakadaka onto his CT. Um, TTB just realizes he doesn't have the weapons bound properly. Okay, that has been fixed. Haha! -ha. And now we start the Rakadaka on the CT. And of course, we can also start shooting here with the lasers. But as you can see, it develops quite a bit of heat. So, what I would recommend is that you save here with the lasers until such a time as all it is your racks actually jam up. Um, and then you shoot the mediums. But be careful because you will have to incur quite a bit of heat at this point. So there are more for like point defense if you need to shoot a certain component very quickly. Or if all your racks have jammed and you still have heat left. And of course you do have the double cool shot to help deal with any heat issues. And the main part for you of course is your quadruple AMS that will shoot down enemy missiles big time. Alright, now let's get into a mech that TTP really likes for weird reasons. Now, as you guys know from my live streams and from my videos, I like to play mechs that send a message. I like to intimidate my opponents. I like to go right in their faces and just show them that they have no chance of survival left. And if there's one mech that kind of basically really embodies this feeling of despair and death and doom coming towards you, and uh, it, that is a little bit signature to me, I would say it is probably this one the Annihilator 2A in TTB's patented build with double chainsaws and a nuke on the back. That's not the build of course, but um, the weapons make up the build. And you can do this with a double Ultra AC-10 and a double Ultra AC-5 setup on the Inner Sphere side, not a problem. But what I will show you here today guys is my Raka Daka shotgun build, which is basically a power drill. It doesn't do a huge amount of damage in short periods of time, but it will just melt through mechs over a couple of, I would say, five to six seconds. So let's check out the build. The basis is going to be a standard engine 300, so you have your standard assault 48 kph speed. We've got three rotary AC2s and we've got three LB2X auto cannons. These come in real handy once you open up components because they will start critting out weapons and uh, other components. They will start exploding ammo and of course they will do more damage once they hit through the armor. We've got one more double heat sink here in the right torso. We've got two double heat sinks in the engine. We've got a total of one, two, three, four five tons of rack two ammo if i'm correct here and one two three four tons of lbx2 ammo in order to fit all of this we have to lower the arms a little bit and we have to lower the legs considerably and the head a little bit but that's all fine because what are you shooting on an annihilator you're not gonna shoot the arms even if you try to shoot the arms it's more like that you hit the side torso or the ct so this is what gets shot most in the annihilator the arms are fine to drop a little bit legs well um, most people don't shoot legs, so it's fine to have 63, and with the 53 structure, this is still very, very beefy. Center torso armor, 143, side torso armor, 94, still very respectable, but as you can see, nowhere near the amount of tankiness that that Atlas had that I showed you. 
For the skill tree, we're going heavily into the firepower tree, right hand side, enhanced rack UAC 1 and 2, magazine capacity 1 and 2, and a lot of the heat gen nodes. Survival tree, full survival tree without AMS overload 1 and 2, once again, because we don't have that. Then we go into the sensors tree, seismic 1 and 2, and 5 points of radar deprivation. And in the auxiliary tree, double cool shot with cool shot cooldown, plus double artillery strike. And that is the full build, and that one I'm going to show you in a match. And I'm also going to show you something else, guys. Because a lot of people are very afraid of running XL engines, but there are a few assault mechs that are really good at running XL and that actually can become quite dangerous if they run XL. And um, some of these include, for example, the Banshee, which is very XL friendly, or the Battlemaster, which is also a very XL friendly mech. And I'm going to show you a match in one of those as well, just to make you understand how important movement and positioning can be for assault mechs. But uh, this is the part where I start stop talking about mechs in theory. This is the part where we then now jump into a cockpit and start shooting up stuff. So I'll see you there. All right, guys, welcome to the Grim Plexus. The enemy team is currently between uh, Gulf 7 and Gulf 8. And of course, uh, some are already Target behind me. Acquired. Interesting. Um, we've got two assaults lagging behind. So this will be a fun match to have. What I'm going to try is I'm going to try and get into a location where I can shoot the enemy very quickly. And I think this location might actually be around the corner right here using our high mounted weapons to unleash damage onto them. Maybe on that champion here if he comes around the corner. There we go. Now we're using our high mounted weapons. Tuck him down, Target put a good amount of damage in, he turns his back, we take away his arm, keeps running, Target we unleash one more, gone. and he's down. Okay, Target now we can Target. go ahead, drop an airstrike as soon as we can, and uh, get around the corner here because I don't want to fight around this girder. This can block you and get you killed if you're a little bit not careful. There's an enemy guy over here, light mech right here, oh that's gonna hurt dude. I'm gonna go for his legs, if I can. I missed them. Nope, we got one. <laughs> Jump jetting ain't gonna save you, little kid. Target You're dead. That's important with this build, guys. Acquired. Double tap on the light's leg and he's going to be down. Now the enemies are around the corner, which is uh, interesting to me. Maybe we can do an airstrike, an airstrike onto them here. Dropping it on that corner up top. And uh, now we're gonna go for this Atlas here. Oops, I missed. Let's try this again. And there's also another assault mech down below. So I'm gonna have to fall back here. We keep the Dakar going here on the Atlas, uh, but we don't overstep our bounds because as I said guys there's another set of assaults down there Acquired. gotta be careful about that there's also an assassin down here all right the atlas Acquired. is here he's damaged but not beaten yet ah that missed damn it that's a peculiar position guys let's fall back a little bit shoot the side towards of the atlas kill that away I'm gonna go for CT hopefully not hit my teammates here who uh, have no respect for my Daka unfortunately but uh, oh hello that's an enemy death strike let's go ahead Massage him on the side torso, and now we start pushing in on the side a little bit. Gotta be careful. It's a little bit dangerous what I'm doing, but uh, I think I can do it. That Kodiak is basically almost dead. I'm gonna push in behind him. Should have him in our scopes. Now we start demolishing him. There, he's down. We turn our way over to target Echo, the enemy other mad cat. Side torso on Echo, guys. Help take him down if we can. Doesn't want the side torso to get damaged, but that's fine. Come on. Come on, Taka. Shoot more. Shoot. Shoot. I'm jammed up. Ah! I can't kill him because I'm jammed up too much. Okay, well that's sad, but he's finally dead. Let's go shoot onto the enemy dire wolf. Let's try and uh, not allow him to escape. There's also more targets towards the left of us, so gotta keep that in mind. But I really want to get the dire wolf here. So let's go onto him. Get away his arm. Inside torso. I'm gonna go on the CT. Take him down. Alright. The target's behind us now. Turn around, guys. Turn around. Turn around. Target acquired. Yeah, we're getting pushed in from the back here now. Especially by that assassin. And I'm stuck on a boulder, which is also really unfortunate. Try to get around the corner here. Get some more damage on the assassin. ECM is keeping me relatively safe here. Um, let's try and shoot the Phoenix Hawk in the back. Just lost some ultra other kind of stuff. Still getting shot. Keep on the Phoenix Hawk. He's getting taken down by my teammate. Very nice. I'm still getting shot in the back here by something. There we go. That's the guy that's shooting me in the back. Okay. Gotta be careful about him. He's down. One guy, Fox 7. Be careful. It's a Highlander. Teammates are pushing in on him. I'm gonna join my teammates here. Hopefully he doesn't walk backwards now. 
Good, very good. We can join our teammates, bring the Taka to bear, and start working on the Thailander. We will side torso and take away his life. And that just leaves one target. That's good. Ah, didn't get around the corner fast enough. It's gonna jump once more. I missed. Ah, damn it. I could have had him. Well, there we go. 12 kills over 7 final score. We have a little bit of ammo left, uh, but this should have been an okay match, I would say. And I think we made some, some good decisions here, but the end, uh, trying to hold here, that was really my only option. So we had 2 killing blows, 9 assists, 2 kill most damage dealt, 951 damage done, 362 damage taken, 10 components destroyed. Um, so yeah, I would say that was an okay match to have. Well guys, let's go ahead and jump right into the next game. This one is going to be with the Annihilator. Alright guys, here we are with our Raka Daka Annihilator, complete with chainsaws, a dragon guarding our gold, and of course the Warhorn that sounds like chainsaws because it just adds a lot more fun to it. We're here on the uh, Tormodan Desert, and as you can see I'm already engaging some enemy targets over at 1200 meters distance. We're not going to do much damage here, but we will be annoying and we will let them know that we're here, and hopefully scare them away. That is the plan here. Oh, those missiles are still flying, and apparently he actually got a good lock on them. Well, not the second Zalvo. Okay, so I have two choices now. I can go towards my team in Fox 6, or I can push through Death Valley Artillery in Fox 7. Um, now, Death Valley is called Death Valley because it can be very unhealthy if you push Target through that with acquired. our teammates, but if you have your team with you, and if the enemy team is doing what they're doing right now, which is sitting in Echo 6, Death Valley is actually very, very much a problem. Uh, not a problem, but a possibility. So, what we'll do here is we'll join our little mates here and we'll try and find some targets. The problem is the guys in the Fox 6 area need to make a move towards Death Valley very quickly because the enemy team, if they rotate into Fox 5, Fox 6, they will just run New over target. them. So I'm going to opt here to go to the right hand side of Death Valley. This will give me a better way to uh, expose myself towards the enemy on the right flank and therefore I can't get shot from two areas at the same time. Plus it's a little bit more level out on this side so I will have a better chance of getting my damage in on the targets. Well, let's see what we can find. We see a lot of lerms flying. Check this side first. Nothing there. Check the middle on top. Nothing there. Check the middle. Okay, nothing there. So I can't see any targets right now and I have a raven in front of me. And then we see an enemy Fafnir. And of course guys, this means Raka Daka par Exilos. Just keep the fire going on to him. Just keep firing and be aware that if teammates step in front of you, you have to stop firing or else it's just gonna melt them from their CT from the back. Enemy raven shooting me with large lasers. All right. Now the problem that I'm having right now is that my team is not very um, brave, I would say, so right. they're running around on all sides. And I'm also seeing some red blimps coming in through Death Valley from behind, so I have to address them now. I have to turn and I have to face and address this. But here's the thing guys, this is 450 meters range, this is perfect range for all my weapons and you do not push against this mech, especially not solo, because it's just gonna chew you up. As soon as I don't see enemies anymore, I let my rotary AC2s cool down, I drop an artillery strike, as soon as I see somebody I shoot a little bit and cool down again. We fall back a few meters here to be able to be covered a little bit better. Better. The artillery strike is hitting stuff, and we just wait for a sec. Okay, now that I have teammates down low, I can go back up top and try and defend this position because, once again, the team isn't doing much. So, let's see what we can do here. There's the Raven once more. We shoot him a little bit. Hopefully, that will drive him into cover. I see another assault on the corner of Fox 6 down below. But uh, I'm just going to engage this Hellbringer right here who's uh, shooting at my teammates without getting uh, any reprisal. And uh, you want to make sure that the enemies understand that if they start shooting, they will have to pay with a little bit of uh, well, machine blood and uh, armor plating and uh, that's exactly what we're doing here we're engaging this catapult at 500 meters range which is completely unscary for me because he does have ac20s and those don't work very well at that range but my weapons my weapons work perfectly at that range so we're fine. We fall back a little bit again. Enemy Kitaro pushing in together with a teammate who's blocking his retreat. Guys, don't walk around, uh, don't walk into your teammate's asses. It's a really, really dick move and it can get people killed, as just showcased by the enemy team. So, we've got about five people down below pushing here. And that's perfect for me. I'll just keep the fire going until my racks jam up. And then we go to cover because my side torso on the right side is now very open and I don't want to lose that. Three kills to three. We have a very, very even match so far. And uh, that's mostly due 
to the inability of either my team or the enemy team to actually get something killed and get something pushed. But that's all right. Um, we'll try and make the most out of it. Now, the guys are pushing me down below. I would love to engage here, but the problem is I need to be very careful with my right side torso not to lose that. Target. Let's try and hold this angle for a second here. At Shadowhawk, CT red. That is very important information. And we're still getting shot here on the side torso. That's a catapult again. And I think the Raven is still in this corner here in Echo 5, together with the quick draw, uh, helping us still here as well. So we have to address this now, guys. We have to just push these guys down and kill them, hopefully, because that will allow us to have our backs free. Ah, see if there is the Raven. Told you he would still be there. People just don't like to, put, to change their positions a lot in this game, which is very weird to me, because if in a Raven or something like that, where you're fast and you can move around, uh, that should not be a problem. Actually, what's that Raven doing? He's suiciding right now, basically. So, yeah. There we go. He's dead. Here comes the Hellbringer. Shielding my right side torso right now. Let's see where he goes. Does he drop down? Okay, yeah, he drops down right in front of me. There comes the Salvo. This is it on the side torso. We take him down. Beautiful. Now we can orient ourselves towards the rest of what's coming to, uh, from Death Valley. So let's push back there and engage anything that shows their nose. Um, I'm guessing maybe an assault mech and uh, maybe like a champion or something. Oh, there we go. This is Shadowhawk. There was Red CT. Always remember, guys, where your enemies are damaged. There is the only one to see. We take him down as well. Play that same song again. And the last target here is going to be an enemy raven. Yeah, large laser. CT open. Getting shot by ATMs. And he's going to be dead here. Beautiful. 12 kills over 4 is going to be the final score. We, as you can see, we still have 116 shells for the AC2 and 171 for the rotary AC2. So this lines up quite nicely. Um, do take note, this was AC2s, not LB2s, but it is basically working the same. 3 killing blows, 8 assists, 5 kill most damage dealt, about, well, almost 1200 damage done, 502 damage taken, 11 components taken out. So once again, guys, a very, very solid build, a very fun build to play, and you can use that to great effect. Just you just have to literally engage the enemy head on and just take him down. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All right, guys, and as a final clip, there's something I want All to show you guys. Now, now I've more. shown you guys a lot of Rakadaka today, a lot of powerful alpha strikes, tanky mechs. What I haven't shown you is an agile assault mech. And I could have used a gargoyle, for example, but I want to show you guys in an inner sphere mech what you can do if you actually know how to properly move in those things, how to properly position in those things, and how to make good tactical decisions. This is a Battlemaster 2C 85 ton assault mech. It has three large pulse lasers and two medium lasers. That's a loadout you could easily have on, let's say, a Warhammer, for example, or a Thunderbolt. So there is nothing special about the weapons loadout. It's actually, in fact, under tonnage for the amount of firepower Don't that this assault mech could bring. But there is a reason for that. This oh, mech man. right now is running an XL400 engine, the biggest engine that can fit into this mech, and it gives us a speed of 82 kph in an inner sphere assault mech. Oh, now, what we're doing here is we're pushing towards the right hand side using Artillery the strike. advantage that our speed gives us to chase in after that enemy Thanatos, I believe. And once we have him on our scopes, we'll start shooting him. All the weapons are torso mounted and high up. That is the beauty of the Battlemaster. That would allow us to get some good shots into target as soon as I can see something. But as you can see, we have, don't see anything yet. Maybe that Marauder to see right here. Our teammates are fairly slow, but that's okay. We can just start unleashing onto these targets. We drop the artillery strike on the enemy ramp, and then we start shooting the enemy backs here a little bit while they're going up towards the top. Um, let's go ahead and shoot acquired. Thanatos next. I'm trying to go for side torsos if I can. There we go. We took away the side torso from the Thanatos, and now we keep on pushing, cool down a little bit, and uh, ensure that we don't overheat in the face of the enemy. Took a little bit of damage here, but not too much, just 3%. And uh, the enemy team has already killed one of our Blood Asps, that's not good. And they're all up top, and they're all covered by ECM, so there's not much I can do about the ECM. But what I can do is I can just constantly keep shooting on these guys. One of the main success stories, the main success points that you need to have for assault mechs is you can't be timid and you gotta be searching for trades. You gotta be looking for trades and engagements all the time. If you don't shoot your weapons, you are being useless. There we go, there's an enemy rifleman coming in. He might be shooting me a little bit now, but that's okay. Once again, we use the large pulse lasers to deal some damage and then fall back here. I'm taking a little bit too much damage here, so let's try and twist away and go down. Wow. 
Three kills over zero for the enemy team. It's not looking good for us. There's an enemy Timberwolf coming in. Let's go ahead and help out our Nightstar with this guy, but he should be able to uh, deal with him. We're going to go over onto that ECM gentleman on top here. That's an enemy Thanatos, and he's got double ERP PCs and nothing else. Okay, that's a weird setup, but uh, we'll just help kill him here if we can, using our high-mounted weapons once again to be able to even hit this guy. And uh, whoop, there we go. There is the Rifleman up top once again. We keep engaging him, and we keep the fire going at as much as possible. Four kills to one for the enemy team, but there is no retreat, there is no surrender, and there's also no giving up. Um, but I might have to activate TTP hyper carry mode to be able to pull this one out of the socks. So let's see, uh, maybe go up here, use heat vision. There we go, see an enemy more to see. Shoot him once, twist away very, very fast. That is the power of the XL400 engine. Let's, uh, let's see once more if we can get onto him. Nope, we shoot the rifleman instead and fall back down again. As you can see, I'm just going for very quick engagements, just trying to get my large pulse laser salvo off. And at that point, I will just go ahead, twist away and run away because. I can't go Target ahead spotted. and go for an extended trade here. That would be stupid. I need to preserve my mech as much as possible. There is an enemy Highlander to see, I think, or Highlander. That uh, was a Highlander to see. We shot him in the back and dropped down. Let's see if we can get an angle onto him again. Nope. So we will just go ahead and go onto this ramp here and do the same thing again using our high mounts. The crab is coming in. I see his side torso is open. Okay, there is the buddy that he has in the Marauder 2C. Let's try and see what we can do here. Hello. Oh, there's a Thanatos. Take away his side torso. Kill him. And then we go for the next target here, which is going to be that enemy Highlander 2C once again. But the Brawler Scorch, I think, is coming in right now. That's a... Uh, Highlander, no, the uh, Mara 2C hero mech, and uh, yeah, he's shooting my teammate who went up there. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to follow up with a shot here to help him, but that's okay. We go instead on the enemy Thanatos, take some shot on the side torso, and fall back down again. Now, the team was actually able, together with me, to claw back, and it's now even terms. Five kills to five. Let's go on the left-hand side here and assist. There is the crab once again. Um, unfortunately, his life got shielded by my team's legs, but that's okay. We go uh, take the side torso away, try to take the other side torso, and turn this crab into a zombie. Now we have to be careful with the heat scale. As you can see, we don't have any more abilities to lower that thing instantly because we don't have any more cool shot. So let's be careful here. Let's carefully go up here, find the target, shoot his side torso, fall back down again, do that same thing once more. Once again on the side torso, take away half the firepower for the Scorch. Take a little bit of damage on the left torso, but that was worth it. Do a little bit of a drop shot here. And now we go to the other ramp. Once again, guys, we have the beautiful ability of 82 kph, and that allows us to just quickly reposition Target and attack destroyed. the enemy from an unsuspected angle and uh, do some more damage here. That's the crab once Target again. We've taken through his left side torso. He had a light engine and that is why he died. If we build a crab 27 guys, go for a standard engine. Now, I'm getting massaged a little bit from the right hand side, so I'm thinking maybe go to the left here. There's an enemy piranha coming in and that could be dangerous, Target but um, let's see what he does. Oh, big mistake, dude. Big mistake. He actually stepped backward for a second. That's what killed him because it allowed me to get enough distance in there to shoot him with my lasers. Now we have to carefully creep up here. 10 kills over 9, so we can definitely win this. I just need to make sure I get those kills in. Dodging the enemy artillery strike. Oop, there we go. There Need is target. our friend in the hideout to see. We take away the side torso with the ATMs. And we're going to peek again here in a second and try to take away even more. I'm sliding down here because I want to go for the other side of this ramp right here. And just once again appear from a different angle. Both our side torsos are still relatively fine. Our CT is also relatively fine. And we've got some more armor on the arms. Oop, and that is coming in. And we kill him. Twist away instantly. And now it's just one target, the hideout to see. And we can just focus. Him down. He's got two ear medium lasers and two ATMs. If I get closer, he can't do anything with just two ear medium lasers. He's not going to do damage to me and or kill me. So we use this uh, column here as cover. Getting close and right bye bye. No more range damage. on the ATM 9s, just two medium lasers. And if I have a little bit more accurate here, I kill him. 12 kills over 9, final score. Believe me, guys, this was a very, very uh, hard fought match. And I think we got four killing blows. Let's have a look at the scoreboard in the end. So, this was a fast moving assault. Four killing blows, seven assists, one solo kill, five kill, most damage dealt, 1068 damage done, 12 components destroyed. So, guys, don't be afraid to try out Assault with XL Engines. Just don't XL a King Crab. Please just don't. Hope you liked this video. If you did, thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. And if you want to support this content, go ahead. Check out my Patreon page. Become an active member of Team TTB. Take care, guys.